how are you doing uh, in today's video we are basically going to be looking at the topic known as uh, recipsa loquita we are going to examine this doctrine of recipsa loquita in detail and in this video we are going to be one defining what the doctrine is about and then secondly we'll also be looking at the conditions on which the doctrine applies and then lastly i will share with you two interesting ugandan case laws that actually illustrate the doctrine Hello there. Once again, my name is Mutiaba Conrad. I am a lawyer and a private law tutor. And before we start on our class, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the red button in the lower uh, hand corner of your screen and also turn on your notifications so that when videos are released, this um, is brought to your attention. And then also ensure that you like and share this video with your colleagues so that they are able to benefit. Finally, for students who require private law tutorial sessions, if you need some help, you're struggling with the law, you're struggling in class, please feel free to contact us. Our numbers are down in the description box. These private law tutorial sessions have been proven to work and most of our students who are being mentored and trained in the law with us have actually proven to outperform their fellows who do not have any sort of mentorship. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start right away with the doctrine of recipsa loquita and let's start with the definition. So recipsa loquita in essence is a Latin maxim and it means that facts speak for themselves. That is what the doctrine actually is about and that is what it means. It means that facts speak for themselves. Now what you have to know on this doctrine is that this doctrine applies um, especially in negligence. And basically, when the plaintiff sues on negligence, that is under tort law, he has the burden in law to prove negligence against the defendant. The burden is on he or she who sues. Where the facts of the case obviously point to negligence, the plaintiff can plead recipsa loquita which means that the defendant was obviously negligent. Now, when the plaintiff pleads recipsa loquita, he places a provisional burden of proof on the defendant to show that he was not negligent. The defendant, in order to escape liability, he may plead, for example, act of God, which is a defense, or he may even plead inevitable accident, which is a defense. Or he could even plead intervening act of a third party, or that he took reasonable care and was not negligent. Now, if the defendant fails to prove that he was not negligent, judgment will be entered for the plaintiff. So what do you have to note on the doctrine of recipsa loquita? That one, it's a Latin maxim that basically means that the facts speak for themselves. The facts are so clear for everyone to see that actually they emanated from a very negligent act. What you also have to note is that this doctrine actually shifts a provisional burden on the defendant to prove that they were not negligent. It's important to note at this juncture that actually this is an exception to the general rule under Ugandan law and in most common law countries that actually the burden lies on he who alleges to prove their case. But however, under the doctrine of recipsa loquita, where it's pleaded by the plaintiff, it shifts the provisional burden on the defendant to actually show that they were not negligent. Why does it shift the provisional burden? Because by itself, the doctrine of recipsa loquita is to the effect that the facts are very clear. They are visible for everyone to see that the defendant acted negligently. And therefore, they ought to prove that actually their actions did not amount to negligence. Let's now proceed to look at the conditions on which the doctrine applies. Now, if the plaintiff is going to rely on the doctrine of recipsa loquita, there are certain conditions that must be in place. If they are not, then you cannot rely on this doctrine. The doctrine is special and it's only relied on if there are certain elements, there are certain conditions that are in place. Let's now proceed to look at these conditions. Condition number one is that the thing or subject matter that caused the plaintiff's injury 
must have been under the sole control of the defendant or someone for whom the defendant is answerable. This is very, very important. Now, the defendant must have had the sole control of the thing for which it's, it's alleged has caused the negligent act. Very important. The second condition is that the occurrence must be such that it would not ordinarily have happened without negligence. That if it wasn't for negligence, the occurrence would not actually have happened. Now, it's important here to note that the facts of each case should be examined and analyzed in light of common experience and knowledge. This is the guiding principle for you to rely on this element. And please, it's important for you to note, and I'll repeat that once more. The facts of each case should be examined and analyzed in light of common experience and knowledge. Now, what this basically means is that the facts of each case, when you're looking at them, you should examine them in light of the common experience and knowledge. What normally happens when something of the nature of that nature occurs? What is the common knowledge? What is the common experience? That is the guiding principle on which the second condition uh, of recipsa loquita actual applies. Now, it's also important to note on the sideline that there must be no reasonable explanation as to why the occurrence, please note the occurrence, not the accident, happened. Okay? So for you to go on and rely on the doctrine of recipsa loquita, there must be no reasonable explanation as to why the occurrence actually happened. Okay? Now, having laid down those conditions, ladies and gentlemen, let's now proceed to look at two interesting Ugandan cases that will actually illustrate the doctrine of recipsa loquita in play. I want to share with you the case of Nanziri and another versus Kambaza. It's a case of 1978 reported in High Court Bullet at page 304. The facts of this case are very interesting. The plaintiffs sued for general and special damages for negligence when they sustained serious injuries as they were traveling on the defendant's car. The car actually collided with the bridge and overturned. The first plaintiff sustained a fracture on one of her legs and when it healed, it was shorter. Her right elbow and left shoulder were also dislocated. The second plaintiff's arm was fractured and one of her hips was also dislocated. The plaintiffs went on and pleaded recipsa loquita in court. The issue was whether the doctrine of recipsa loquita applied in the circumstances. And court held, listen, one, recipsa loquita means that in the circumstances of a given case, there is evidence as a matter of argument, which makes it probable that upon the facts of the case, there was negligence, i.e. that the facts speak for themselves. Because they stand unexplained, and the natural and reasonable inference is that there was negligence. That was the first holding of court. But also, secondly, the court also held that recipsa loquita is a rule of evidence which enables the plaintiff to prove the facts of the occurrence and thereby establish a breach of a duty of care on the part of the defendant. The plaintiff need only to plead the facts that show negligence. That's all they have to do. All they have to do is to plead the facts that show negligence and then that will definitely shift the burden on the other party to prove that they were actually not negligent. Lastly, the court also held that there was no explanation from the defendant as to the cause of the occurrence. The rule of recipsa loquita would apply since in any, in any case, vehicles driven with due care and attention do not ordinarily swerve, hit bridges, and overturn, meaning that from the facts as displayed, court accepted that the doctrine of recipsa loquita in the premises applied. Why? Because there was no reasonable explanation for the occurrences or for the occurrence of the accident. Ordinarily, if you're driving a vehicle, and you're taking due care, 
Vehicles ordinarily don't hit bridges and overturn and swerve. Vehicles do not overturn those many times. From the facts you realize, from the nature of the accident, a shorter hip, dislocated shoulders, the accident in itself was unique. From the accident and the impact it had on the victims, it was very clear that indeed the act was negligent. The facts were clear for everyone to see Recipsa Loquita. Ladies and gentlemen, let me proceed to share with you a second case on the same principle that will actually go on to illustrate again this doctrine of Recipsa Loquita. The case of Frank Makumbi versus Chigezi Bus Company Limited. It's a case of 1968 High Court Bullet reported at page 69. This case, the facts were that the plaintiff a 50-year-old man sued the defendant for general damages for loss of expectation of life and loss of servitum. When he lost his two-year-old son, the plaintiff, his wife and son were traveling on the defendant's bus. The bus, driven, swerved in order to avoid a collusion with a trailer which was coming from the opposite direction. This was actually on Massacre Road. The bus fell off the road and rolled several times in the swampy valley and finally rested on its roof. It was upside down. The body of the child was found on top of the bus, you can imagine. Okay? Court held that the bus belonged to the defendant and was under the sole control and management of the defendant's servant. There was no explanation as to why the bus overturned the doctrine of recipsa loquita applied in the premises. Ladies and gentlemen, these two cases clearly illustrate to you the doctrine of recipsa loquita in play. Thank you very much for listening. That was all on the doctrine of recipsa loquita. I encourage you once again for students who are struggling in class, students who need to appreciate these legal principles more, please reach out to us. Our numbers are down in the description box. We can always make a private arrangement where we can tutor you in your legal endeavors. Also, ensure you subscribe and like our channel and also share and turn on your notification. Thank you very much for listening in. We meet again in another class. Bye-bye.